Hello, thank you for watching this video. In this video today, we will be setting up an Aruba remote access point and show you how that is done. So what's a remote access point? A remote access point is basically the same access points as you have in the enterprise. They're building a tunnel to the mobility controller, which is here in the middle. Um, although while the tunnel is not going over the local area network, it will be running over the internet and that will be using IPsec or UDP port of 4500. So in this demo, um, this is my setup and what we will be doing is uh, show you the configuration that needs to be done on the mobility controller and then we will first move this uh, access point that's already deployed as a campus access point uh, to a remote access point and in uh, the second part of the video we will be uh, converting a remote access point that uh, has never been uh, on the enterprise and uh, directly from instant we will be moving that to a remote access point connected to the controller. So let's first uh, bring on our controller. So this is our controller and as you can see on the controller we have uh, one access point, so two radios uh, connected, and uh, there is already one client. And um, let me see, that client is um, indeed uh, connected, and I think it's connected to the corp network. Yeah, it's connected to the corp network uh, on the AP135 that is connected. So this AP135 will be the access point that we are uh, converting to a remote access point. So in order to uh, make a remote access points work, um, uh, one thing is important and that is that we are under VPN services. We need to configure a remote access point pool. So the access point for its VPN, it will get a IP address and that IP address will be assigned from this pool. So you need to have an IP pool assigned here and as you can see I picked here uh, a range from the IP pool which uh, is a range of uh, IP addresses that clients will get if they can't get an IP address. Uh, most important is that this uh, IP pool is not conflicting with your routing scheme. It doesn't need to be routable on your network um, although if you have that IP addresses on your network um, it will take IP addresses locally from the pool. So for that reason, it's good to have an uh, IP range that's outside your uh, enterprise scope. And this uh, range by definition is outside of your enterprise scope. So that's why I configured that. So um, further, um, we uh, so normally we can uh, build a special AP group for the uh, remote access point. So I do have here my uh, Aruba Lab AP group with the Corp SSID. So typically you will create here a new uh, AP group with remote access points with just the corporate SSID. But um, yeah, it's not needed. So for that reason, uh, we'll leave it uh, like that uh, for now. So to convert the existing access point to a remote access point, uh, we are going here into the AP installation. And uh, you can see that the AP now has an IP address here on uh, the corporate network. And um, the flags uh, show that it's um, um, using Ike version 2, which is for the control plane security. And it's in 135 AP. So uh, we click here and we click provision and uh, if you want to convert it to a special remote access point group, you select here the remote access point group. Um, but um, what is important is that we uh, are converting it here to a remote access point. So we tick here, yes, for the remote access point. And what's very nice is that every Aruba access point already has a client certificate uh, built in so we can whitelist the access points based on its MAC address because the MAC address is put in the uh, certificate that has been placed in in the trusted platform module uh, from the factory so we can uh, very easily make uh, make the authentication happen so uh, yeah nothing to do just a whitelist and the good thing is by uh, converting it will automatically whitelist the access point in the instant we will see how we are um, whitelisting access point because uh, yeah that instant is, has not been uh, on-premise uh, before. So 
besides that it's a remote access point, uh, we need to put in here the IP address for uh, the controller, which is the internet IP address. Um, I picked this one. And um, yeah, let's put the TFTP server um, as well. Don't think that's really needed, but um, we'll do it anyway. And uh, if we want to change the uh, AP name, for example, to um, express that it's a remote access point, we can do that here. Um, and then basically we press here, apply and reboot. So um, I did connect a console port to the access point. So uh, what we will see here is that the access point is now going down. Um, it's rebooting and uh, while it's rebooting, let me first replug the access point to the internet connection. So if we have the, um, uh, the drawing uh, again, I just um, unplug the access point here from the LAN and I'm now uh, plugging it in here into uh, the internet router so it can uh, reach the controller on this external IP address. So let's see if it's getting an IP address in that uh, specific subnet. So I will be not be doing anything in the console. So it's just that we can uh, view the process uh, here. So um, no need to have a console cable or to plug in. If you are, um, uh, if you can take the time, um, yeah, it will just run. So here we can see that it uh, did uh, get an IP address. It did um, get the master IP address which we just provisioned. And now it will be connecting to uh, the controller. So let me see if I have access to my controller as well. So here we still see um, the old uh, status of the access points. Let me see. So now it's uh, still booting up. Um, by the way, if we want to see if the access point is uh, coming on the network, a very nice command is the command show data path, data path session. And then we uh, include 4500 so we can see if the IPsec connection is coming in. Uh, if the access point will not come up, uh, very often the problem is that uh, the uh, IPsec UDP 4500 is not allowed to the controller. And here you can very quickly see that um, um, there is indeed traffic from my uh, between my controller and uh, the net IP address of uh, my access point. So um, we've seen here that it uh, received this IP address. So there is a net device uh, in between and that works all uh, pretty nicely. So let's try again, show AP active um, and we can see the access point is up now. Um, it's in the group Aruba lab still. And uh, what we um, also can see here is that uh, the IP got an IP address from the VPN pool that we assigned and the outer IP is an internet IP. And here in the flags, we can see that it is a remote IP. So um, from the GUI, we should be able to see the same. So here, um, yeah, we have the same here um, and it's up and um, probably um, by the time now, um, yeah, we see the radios are up. Um, no clients yet, uh, but the clients will um, connect quickly. So let me check my client. Ooh. That's weird. Yeah, so um, we can see we are connected to the Corp uh, network. And let me see here, clients, I should be connected now. Yeah, I'm connected. And uh, you can see that I still have an IP address here in the corporate uh, network. So um, over the internet, uh, my client is tunneled to the controller and um, here it receives an IP address from uh, the corporate network. So that's how we uh, convert a campus access point to a remote access point. One thing to, uh, that you can realize is that um, it's not um, as easy because the access point needs to be uh, connected to the controller before you can convert it. So um, let's uh, now do the situation where we have a remote access point that comes out of the factory as an instant AP, um, we can convert that um, as well. So let's here on my um, on my Windows system, 
Um, I fired up the instant access point, the remote access, uh, the, the rep 109. I can connect to it. And if I'm connected, I can uh, go to the instant.rubanetworks.com. So this is, uh, yeah, should all be uh, known by this time. And with admin, admin, we can do the default logon. So I'm in uh, the Netherlands, so I nicely pick that uh, country code. So from here, um, so yeah, we can configure here all the instant access points. That's not needed because uh, the only thing we are going to do is convert it to a remote access point. And to do that, we go into the maintenance. Then here in the convert tab, um, we can convert access points. There are a few options here. Um, but of course, what we want to do here is uh, we want to convert it to a remote access point managed by a mobility controller. Um, as you can see here, it's connected to uh, the remote network here. Um, so it is already remote. It has never been on uh, on premise. So let me look up my IP address 208.2.3.62. And what we now can do is a convert uh, now. And what we will see is that this conversion will fail because we didn't whitelist the access points um, in advance. And you can whitelist the access points because um, if we are checking here in the controller under configuration and then here under AP installation and under the whitelist, we can here for the remote APs get the entries and what we saw here is that the ap135 is already here and that's because it was um, provisioned from the um yeah, from the mobility controller and what we need to do here is add our um, remote access point and yeah because i don't know it's trying to set up the vpn um because i don't know the mac address and i'm a bit lazy uh, by the time, uh, let's see here on the mobility controller, if we do a show log all 10 for the last 10 entries, um, we see all kinds of weird things, but 20. So, um, yeah, here we see the authentication uh, field. So we can see it's trying to authenticate as this uh, username from this IP address. Um, and um, here we can see that uh, the remote access point is trying to access the network, uh, but it's not whitelisted. So we copy and paste it from here and uh, we can give it a name. So this is uh, rep109. Uh, Hermann, uh, we can immediately put it in the right group. So yeah, let's put it here again, rep109. Hermann, um, and we add it. So um, now it should be uh, whitelisted. So let's go back to our tunnel. So these are the errors why it didn't uh, didn't work out. So let's convert it again. So convert now. And uh, what it will do now is it will set up a VPN tunnel to the mobility controller. Um, then it's authenticated because it's now whitelisted, it will pull the firmware that's needed to be a remote access point from the mobility controller, um, install that, and um, after that it will connect to the network. So I think we have the console um, still running. Let me let me replug it into the remote access point. So now it's connected to the remote access point. We see... Um, by the user prompt, we can see that it is an instant access point. Uh, so let's see where the process is. So it's uh, now performing the conversion. So it's uh, pulling down the firmware over the internet. And um, in a few minutes, it will uh, restart. So let's wait for that. And we'll be back when it's restarted. So we're back. And now you can see in the background here on the console, uh, the access point is booting. You can see it's in rep 109. Again, um, I will not do anything here on the console. So if you don't have a console cable, no problem. Uh, you can see that it's running uh, AOS 6511. Uh, 
So it has been converted to a uh, remote access point by the controller firmware. And uh, now it will be uh, connecting um, to the controller. So let's see. So we're back and we saw that the AP got its IP address. We also see here, so here's the IP address. Um, it has the master, so this is similar like the 135. And uh, we also saw here that the image upgrade was successful. So we'll wait a few seconds longer and then check on the controller. So as you can see, the IPsec connection is coming in. Let me see if the X point is active already. So yes, we see it is active. Um, so now the 109 is active in the same group um, and it got another IP address from the pool. We also see that the client has uh, reconnected and this is, uh, yeah, again, a remote access point. So here from uh, the dashboard. We should be able to see this uh, remote access point. So what did we see? Um, it's very easy to set up a, a remote access point. And because these access points have the certificates and trusted platform modules built in, it's very easy to set up the VPN. We just have to enable an IP pool and we uh, need to whitelist the access points, which is done if you convert it from a campus access point to a remote access point automatically and after we've done what we can see is that uh, yeah it will be just like an campus access point but it's running over the uh, internet so um, yeah we see that we are connected here again uh, no longer to the instant but to the corporate network and uh, let me see here if we check for the user so if we check here clients um, we should have the same exactly the same IP address which is in the corporate network um, here again. So um, yeah, I think this was a very nice demo. Um, and thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, uh, please like us and subscribe to the channel and uh, leave your comments under the video if you want us to record videos on specific topics. So this was a video on Aruba Remote Access Points. My name is Herman. Thank you very much.